a season in Shrewsbury Town we'll never forget, 2002-2003. A slippery slope and a trap door marked nationwide conference. Only three points at home to Carlisle would prevent the drop. A season that had promised so much was slowly and painfully turning into a disaster. When Brian Wake rounded off a Carlisle win and a hat-trick, things would never be the same again. Kevin Ratcliffe said goodbye to Shrewsbury Town, as the club said farewell to the Football League. Happily since then, it's got a whole lot better. A bright new dawn, a gayer meadow. Shrewsbury Town are planning on going straight back up. Jimmy Quinn is the man in charge. He's brought in new faces, instilled a new belief and focus minds on going back to the big time at the first time of asking. Yes, we're at the Gay Meadow for football affecting the top and bottom of the nationwide conference. It's Shrewsbury versus Lee RMI. Shrewsbury 15 points adrift of the leaders Chester but even now boss Jimmy Quinn believes they can bridge that gap. Ian Snowden is alongside me as always. They've got three games in hand, it's still a tall order you've got to say. Yeah it is, Chester have got the points in the bag Rob and uh, Shrewsbury they're a good side, I like the side, uh, I think they play good football but it's going to be a hell of a difficult to catch Chester. It's always difficult as well when the side is relegated from the Football League. What's your, 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 your view of the job that Jimmy Quinn has done here? Yeah, I think he's done a tremendous job, to be quite perfectly honest, because the club must have been such a low ebb when they went down. I, I know from the Doncaster days when they went down, everybody's morbid and not really looking forward, but Jimmy Quinn's done a terrific job, and as I say, there's every chance that they could go back up via the playoffs. Certainly in playoff position at the moment. The home form's absolutely terrific. Let's have a look at... Uh, the last two home games, beginning with uh, their victory over Burton Albion. Um, they're going to miss this man, Luke Rogers, who's uh, suspended tonight. But they've got goals in them, haven't they, this side? Yeah, they have. Uh, Luke Rogers, great little player, sharp, scores goals. But they've also got two lads up front tonight that'll be playing there, Dwayne Darby and uh, Colin Cram, that are equally good players at this level. And I'm, I'm sure Luke will not be missed that much. Dave Edwards with a shot uh, uh, just wide. Is that the key, just lifting spirits, do you feel, uh, for a, a relegated team? Yeah, we are a doubt. The, obviously, the lads have got to get used to the new manager, and they've seen that. I was just talking to Colin Cram a little bit earlier That's on. That's his shot as well. Maybe you can help him later on. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. But uh, he says the spirit at the club's magnificent, and uh, they're all behind Jimmy Quinn. And when you've got that kind of spirit, you've definitely got half a chance. As Dwayne Darby just wide as well. They've got goals in the side. They've also got that little bit of experience, haven't they? They have, and uh, I think it's vital at, at conference level that you have got good young players, but you've also got to have experience as well, Rob. We saw Woking lose narrowly to Chester last week uh, here on Sky Sports, and they are at the Gay Meadow once again. I mean, they're not winning by many, but this is a this is a key result, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a terrific result. As we we did see Woking the other uh, the other week against. Um, Chester, they did get beat, but they were a difficult side to beat, and this is a great, again, at home, it's a great result for Shrewsbury. Luke Rogers again uh, had most of the chances, he's got to be missed, Ashley Bays had a, a good night as well, I mean they have got goals, we talked about Colin Crown, Dwayne Derby, and when Rogers is back, I mean he ends up getting his 11th of the season here, but you know, he's, he's got variety, he's got options Jimmy Quinn, hasn't he? Yeah he has, and uh, as, as we said, we... Uh, I was talking to Colin Cram and he says that Luke and Dwayne Darby have been doing exceptionally well and that's why he's been on the subs bench and to have a player like Colin available now to come in for Luke is a big plus for, uh, for the manager. I know you mate uh, Kevin Ratcliffe, the former boss here, told you about this fellow Luke Rogers. A lot of clubs were watching him last season and uh, that was a cracking finish, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, tremendous finish. He's not even looked up. He know where the goal were and as soon as the Bulls arrived at his right foot, he's punished uh, walking and, and put it away great. Sending off just in the last minute, Sam Aston and Davis Hall, uh, what did you make of that? Yeah, a bit of nothing really, I think uh, the referees at conference level do get a little bit excited, Rob, and uh, I don't think there were much in that, I think Sam Aston probably led with his head and might have deservedly, but I, I, the walking lad, I don't think he did a lot <laughs> wrong at all. <laughs> Let's have a look at uh, the top of the conference table. Chester, five clear of Hereford, both the top two won at the weekend, Barnett an older shot drew. Uh, we've got all the goals from the, the games affecting the top of the league later on in the programme, so stay tuned for that, as they say. Uh, shows me 15 points behind. Uh, if nothing else, they look well set for the playoffs. Yeah, I think I think there are strong candidates for the playoff, definitely. I think there'll be an hard side to beat, but just look at Chester, uh, Chester and Hereford. 
it's between them. I, I fancy Chester all along. I think that'll please the Eddieford supporters <laughs> with my predictions. I've had loads of stick over that one recently, so I'm not predicting. I am not predicting anything today. <laughs> Let's have a look at the bottom. Uh, Lee RMI uh, in second bottom at uh, at the moment. Seven adrift of safety. Um, Phil Starbuck, their boss. I mean, it's going to be tough for them to get out. We wouldn't say it's Moss win tonight, but they could do with getting a point, couldn't they? Yeah, definitely. But if they, if they get all three, they are level with form, uh, Farnborough, sorry, and these lights at the end of the tunnel, but there's still four points then of Tamworth. And it's going to be a tall order, but hopefully Phil can get his troops rallied and they can pick up sufficient points to stay up. Shrewsbury boss Jimmy Quinn scored 210 goals during his league career at the age of 44. He kind of rations himself uh, at the moment. He, he's concentrating purely on getting Shrewsbury back up to the big time. He's speaking with Johnny Phillips. Well, Jimmy, do you still think you can have a say in where the title's going this season? Uh, I hope so. Um, Chester, you've got to be fair, have, have uh, done an exceptional job. Mark's done a great job there. Uh, they just keep grinding out results week in and week out. and uh, I think they've had four or five games at home where they've scored in the last minute and, and won the game. So that's, that's all credit. There's a uh, you know, good, good team there, good team performances they're putting in week in and week out. But you know, they've got a lot of hard games to play. They've got uh, ourselves, Hereford, uh, yeah, Hereford mm -hmm. Aldershot, Barnet mm -hmm. to play. Uh, if they're still up there at the end of that, then they deserve to win the league. But uh, we'll, we'll keep, uh, while it's possible for us to, to gather enough points to catch them, we'll try and do that. Is it frustrating for you because you're not doing too much wrong yourselves? No, we, we've had a great run, and, and uh, you know I'm always worried as a manager that complacency will set in when you when you win a few games. You know uh, we've got to remain focused and try and win every game we play. It's harder, it's easier said than done because uh, you know we're playing Lee tonight. They're second from bottom and they're fighting for their lives to stay in the league. So it's going to be a difficult game tonight. But uh, we've got to play on a front foot and, and remain focused and try and win all the all the matches and. Uh, if we do that, it'll give us a, a great chance to, to maybe catch them. Are you potentially worried that tonight they may slip up at a game that on paper looks like a banker? Well, it's always a, a potential banana skin, you know, when you're playing Lee and, and, and people just expect you to beat them, but uh, there's no easy games. Uh, Lee have come off the back of a good win. They, they beat uh, Margate 4-2. We had them watched. And on the day, they, they were well worth the win. So, you know, I've said to our lads in there, don't expect anything less than a hard game tonight. And uh, I'm sure it'll prove that, but uh, we, we are at home, we've got fantastic uh, support here. And uh, as long as we play on the front foot and express ourselves and, and go out and show a bit of quality and commitment, I'll, I'll be pleased. Well, best of luck tonight, thanks Jimmy. Thanks very much. Timmy's looking well. I I'm a bit sorry he's not included himself this evening. I'm quite embarrassed really, he's five years older than me. Bob. <laughs> and he looks remarkably fit compared to me. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. He, he is still playing, and uh, sixteen he's times he's played this and season. He scored five goals as well. He's uh, he's in remarkable shape. Yes. Uh, well, the Lee boss, uh, Phil Starbuck, should know one or two things about management. During his league career, he played under Howard Kendall and the one and only Brian Clough. Now he just wants to steer his side clear of trouble. He's speaking with John. Well, Phil, it is going to be a tall order staying off, isn't it, this season? Absolutely, yeah. You know, the elements and everything is against us. Uh, we're a part-time team, and uh, you know, most of the teams in this division are full-time. So it is tough, uh, but you know, the lads are battling away and they're giving it their best shot. So, you know, you never know what will happen in this game. How are you getting on personally? Because you're, you're new to management as well. Oh uh, yeah, fairly new. Uh, I'm enjoying it. It's a big learning curve, especially in this division. And so, but thoroughly enjoying it. And uh, you know, you do your best. We're working hard. And uh, you know, hopefully, you never know what happen in the future. Very tough task tonight, though, against Shrewsbury side. They're d doing the business at home. Yeah, they're a good team. They're a strong team. They're physical. They're organised. And of course, you know, they're full time, which uh, makes a big difference for us. You know, we're only part time. And we're deemed really as the minnows of the division. Uh, and so it's almost like David and Goliath uh, scenario tonight. But, you know, we'll give it a, a big shot. You know, we do our best. You know, we feel as though we, you know, we should have beat them at our place, to be fair. You know, we're winning 1 0. They scored in the last minute of the game, which was disappointing. So, yeah, we're, the lads are up for the game. And, uh, you know, we'll go out there and do, do you know, the best we can. A few players missing, but the, the surprising omission, as far as I could see, was the keeper. He's, he's away at a wedding, is he? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, not enough to contend with, and your goalkeeper tells me he needs to go to Australia. And, uh, you know, it's his brother's wedding, he's the best man. And uh, so, you know, there's not a lot you can do, you know, let, let, let the lad go. Uh, and uh, so, but Paul Jules helped us out at Wigan, and uh, we got the lad. Uh, uh, James Salisbury on loan mm. and uh, you know he's looking forward to the game and the experience he's going to get from an, having a month's loan with us. And I imagine the players are quite confident after a good result last time out. Yeah, yeah, with a good uh, result last week at Margate we won 4-2 uh, but to be fair 
you know, the lads have been playing well for the last few weeks and uh, you know, the results that we've been getting haven't really you know, been doing us justice. Mm -hmm. uh, so the lads are looking forward to the game, you know, they're playing well and like I say, if they do everything right tonight, hopefully we'll get a result. Well, best of luck tonight. Thanks, Phil. Thank you. Cheers. Just what you need, isn't it? Your goalkeeper saying, hey, boss, sorry, I can't play. I'm off to a wedding. Unbelievable. But uh, he's a nice lad, full star. But I had him playing for me at Doncaster when I was managed there. Played a, a few games and uh, having a look at his dress sense there, he's definitely improved as well. <laughs> I tell you what, though, you're talking, he's a young manager, but, but playing under Howard Kendall, especially for, you know, Brian Clough as well, some things you would hope would have rubbed off. Oh, if you can't have learned off them two managers, Rob, it's time to pack in because... You can't speak highly enough for Brian Clough and I worked under Al Kendall for years and what a great manager he was. So I'm sure Phil's took something out of both their managers to take to his, uh, to his side. OK, I mean, you said you'd been getting a bit of ribbing for people who maybe didn't see. Ian uh, uh, said that perhaps Daggers would, uh, would beat Hereford the other day, ended up 9-0 the other way. But I, I think uh, from, from Mystic Snowden, we've got to go for another prediction. How do you see it going today? Well, the Lee fans will be delighted because I'm going to tip Shrewsbury. <laughs> because, no, I, I think Shrewsbury the stronger tome. They haven't got a full team out, Lee, and uh, I think it's going to be a hell of a difficult, but, yeah, unfortunately for Shrewsbury <laughs> fans, it's Shrewsbury. Sorry, boys. Let's see how it goes. Let's join commentators Clive Walker and Kevin Keatings. Thank you, Rob. And the Shrewsbury players have run into some very consistent form at the right time of the season. Just one defeat in the last 11 for Jimmy Quinn's side. They are odds-on favourites to complete another win tonight. But Lee RMI, the part-timers, have other things on their mind. Fresh from a victory themselves, last time out, a much-needed win to bridge the gap a little between themselves and the other strugglers at the wrong end of the conference. And let's take a look at the two teams then. First of all, Shrewsbury Town, one in force change from the side that started last Tuesday's 1-0 home win against Woking. Second top scorer Luke Rogers is suspended. There's a quick return for Dwayne Darby, who had started the previous eight matches. Four of the side, Darren Moss, Ryan Lowe, Jamie Tolley and Sam Aston, are survivors of the squad, relegated from the third division last May and now dreaming of a quick return to league football. Well, they say build your team from the back, a very strong back four for Jimmy Quinn. Four across the middle, Ryan Lowe, Sam Aston, very direct, very quick experience with Martin O'Connor. And it's up front, Colin Cram, the goal scorer, and Dwayne Darby. Well, Lee, RMI are without their assistant player manager, Steve Redmond, who's suspended. Paul Shepard is injured. There are starts for Martin Lancaster, who skippers the side tonight, and Warren Payton, who returns from a ban. These are the only changes manager Phil Starbuck makes to the side that arrested a run of eight league defeats in nine with a 4-2 home win against Margate nine days ago. And Phil Starbuck goes with three at the back. Flood the midfield, but it'd be Steve Brody who pushes on and tries to support the front two of Mario Danielle and the goal scorer extraordinaire, David McNiven. Well, Shrewsbury are not amongst the leading scorers. In fact, they are the lower scorers in the top nine of the conference at the moment. But Colin Cram is their leading scorer with 14 goals, a nomadic career. Shrewsbury are the 12th club that he's played at in his professional life. And in the absence of Luke Rogers, a lot of responsibility on his shoulders to provide goals tonight. And talking of goals, well, what a record this man has got. David McNiven, 21 conference goals in a side that's next to bottom in 31 conference games this season. That's got a lot of league managers looking at him and a lot of envious managers wondering whether they can tempt him away from Lee, including perhaps the Shrewsbury manager himself. Jimmy Quinn, who signed McNiven when he was in charge of Northwich Victoria and hasn't ruled out the possibility that he might move for McNiven again. As he shakes hands with Phil Starbuck. And certainly a big crowd has turned out again here at Gay Meadow, where they've been averaging gates of over 4,000 this season. And a very interesting statistic is that last season in the Football League, the average gates here were just over 3,600. So they've dropped out of the league and increased their attendances here. Full credit to the folk of Shrewsbury, who are still right behind their team. It's 
Promotion chasing Shrewsbury Town against relegation threatened Lee RMI. The full timers against the part timers. And can the side in red and white provide one of the shock conference results of the season here? But it is worth recalling that one of Lee RMI's three away wins this season was in Hereford to Sedgemoor. Space one there by Cram, and the first touch in the Lee RMI side is a very confident one from 19 year old James Salisbury, signed only last Wednesday on loan from Wigan Athletic. Big night for him, Clive. Well, it will be. I think Phil Starbuck will be more than happy with the way he took that cross because it was a decent ball in by Cram. Showed some good skills wide as well. Cram, he's done very, very well there, but great take by the goalkeeper. Gives his defence some confidence because he's only, he's only trained with them the once. So, uh, you know, good for the, for the start from the hour. This is McNiven. Brody getting the flick on. This is Daniel. For Steve Brody again. Some good width in the Lee attack here. Gumby. Well, it opened up for the shot for Steve Gumby, who was a free last month from Berry, only 19. Big job on tonight. Certainly, Shrewsbury is strong through those midfield areas. They show themselves to be nice and positive there, Lee RMI as well. Getting wide, getting into some good areas, getting bodies in the box, showing some intentions early on. Obviously, they'll take the game to Shrewsbury and give themselves a chance of maybe snatching some sort of points out of the game. Daniel, who we're told by Phil Starbuck has uh, electric pace. Here he is again. Buys the free kick out of Darren Moss. Well, he did. He just showed a nice touch, though, didn't he? The ball comes into his first touch was excellent. It's just running away from him there as he's trying to get round Darren Moss. And the referee deems it to be a free kick, but it's in a good position. This is a good distance out. Of, you know, sort of 24, maybe 25 yards away from goal. And Roscoe is there. So too is Warren Payton. Gumby as well. And Roscoe, well, he got uh, plenty of bend on it. But uh, it all was started way outside of Scott Howie's goal. Yeah, surprising they went that way, really. I was looking at the wall there. Wall was in a good position. They had one and a half, at least one and a half, maybe two bodies over from the outside of the post. And very difficult to bring the ball back in that far. So he's had a go at it. And to be fair to Lee RMI as well in the first couple of minutes, they've really push Shrewsbury back. Daniel, it's going to break here for Jamie Tolley. Now Moss, who's been one of Jimmy Quinn's consistent players this season. In fact, the Shrewsbury manager was picking out this uh, boy, Darren Moss, and the two centre-backs, uh, Riddler and Tinson, for special praise this season. They are the best, the joint best, defence in the conference along with the league leaders Chester it's so important for sides as well and we said earlier on about building from the back it's important to have a solid back four if you can have one you're not going to give goals away and you've got a chance throw goes for Lee RMI it's Gumby Holmes for Brody. Look quite lively in the opening minutes. Cram. Now Easton, player who was sent off in Shrewsbury's 1-0 win last Tuesday against Woking. Shrewsbury are going to appeal against that red card. This is the vastly experienced O'Connor. Linky again with Easton. 36 years old now, Martin O'Connor, plenty of league experience behind him. Very much Jimmy Quinn's coach on the field. Sedgemore. Brave header won by Darren Moss. Now Daniel.
certainly a big Philip to the RMI, that 4-2 win against Margate. I know Phil Starbuck has been saying that uh, their performances have been better than the results. Haven't been getting the best of luck, he says. Well, they, to be fair to them, they've started nice and brightly as well. They've got a good shape about them. They're threatened as well. I just think this is a sort of game that Phil Starbuck, you know, be a feather in his cap if he gets something out of it. You just feel talking to him before the game, he was uh, you know, a little bit on edge. You just feel that you know he, he knows that you know, it's a big game for them They're on the television. And I think that'll probably suit the likes of David McNiven as well. You know, he's he's got an, a, an opportunity tonight, if you like, to to be on that stage. It's you know it's on the television, it's live on the TV. You know, this is a chance. If you're going to score a goal or score some good goals, do it in front of the cameras because that could set him up maybe for a move to a bigger club. Easton struggling to get beyond Holmes and Gareth Holmes penalised in the end. He's the elder brother of Derby County's Lee. Things like when you see teams like Lee RI start a game like this very, very well. Good turn here by Cram. Now was the contact. The referee couldn't have been closer and said no free kick and no penalty against Martin Lancaster. And now Brody, Daniel. I'm sure, Shrewsbury have done their work on Mario Daniel. I know about his pace, but Shrewsbury had a shout for a penalty here, Clive. Well, he did, and he's turned so well, hasn't he? Got himself in behind. I think there's a there's a, there's a foot out. I mean, he, I think he's bought the foul really, rather than than the, any attempt to pull him down. Maybe possibly with a hand, but I don't think too much contact there, to be honest. Well, to be fair to the referee, Robert Pollock, he gave himself the ideal view of the incident. I was just going to say, Lee RMI start so well, but you know, you question where they are in the league. This is Tolly. What a bad try. Good effort. From Jamie Tolly. Yeah, he's linked up well there. Ball's gone into the front man. He's got into position very, very well. Struck it reasonably well, not on his strong foot. It's just rising over the crossbar. Part of the squad relegated from the Football League last May, only 20. Nice open start to the match. This is Ryan Lowe. Easton. The uh, best of challenges from Warren Payton. Good refereeing from Mr. Pollock. Just a word of admonishment to Payton. They're not flashing any cards around. Uh, referee tonight, and rightly so. I just think Sam Aysen got himself stuck in there, trying to go round and round in circles. And Warren Payton thought, well, I've got to get close, get tighter to him. Just stuck a foot out. He's made a good decision there not to book him. Didn't feel like that was a bookable offence. Big Dwayne Darby waiting for Jake Sedgemore's free kick. Good defending there by Durkin. Away by Roscoe. Brody. Now Tolly. Asking an awful lot of Big Dwayne Derby, who won the conference not that long ago with Rushton and Diamonds. Made his move here to Shrewsbury last November. Proven goal scorer in the past in this league. Jimmy Quinn hoping he can be again. There's a problem with Sam Aston here. It must have been that challenge just a few minutes ago. He's just struggling. He's going over to the bench. He needs a little bit of treatment, I think. Well, he's a key player for Jimmy Quinn, Sam Aston. Offers great width down the left-hand side, and it's a rather nervous look there from the Shrewsbury manager as Easton gets treatment. Well, it looks like he might just have jarred his knee as the challenge came in. Connor battling well for possession. This is low. Good pace from low, and onside here. It's Dwayne Darby. And 
Dwayne Darby gives Shrewsbury Town the lead with his fourth goal for the club. What an awful moment for young James Salisbury on his debut. Somehow it got beyond him when it seemed as though he looked certain to make the save, Clive. Well, that was Martin O'Connor, wasn't it? In the middle of midfield, wins it well, very, very strong. And then it was all about the little bit of pace. And the back four pushed up, really not together. And Dwayne Darby, I feel he was going for the far corner. Seemed like there was a lot of space to the left-hand side of James Salisbury. And he tucks it through his legs. Salisbury will be disappointed with that. The back four of Lee really coming up. Sixes and sevens. Left back, Jake Sedgmore, keeping them on the side. So the form side at the moment take the lead. And the man who's come in for the suspended Luke Rogers, Dwayne Darby with a goal. Now Sedgmore. That's the goal scorer, Darby. Now Tolly. Nice touch from Darby. Here's Sedgmore. Holmes struggling to get back to him. This time more comfortable for young James Salisbury. I know that uh, Paul Jewell rates him highly. He's just about to sign a new one-year pro contract up at the JJB Stadium. Easton disappears into the Shrewsbury dressing room. And it would appear that uh, a change is imminent. Cram. Looks like he's lost out there to Peyton. Shrewsbury are ready to make the switch. And the former Crew Alexandra player, Kevin Street, just one of so many in this Shrewsbury squad with so much past league experience, he is the player to replace Easton. Now, Street is capable of playing in Easton's position. He's not as left-sided as uh, the player that's departed, but uh, looks as though he will take up the role now vacated by the injured Easton. Here's Lowe, who set up the goal for Derby. Dwayne Darby, aggressive in his challenge and too aggressive. Well, he didn't really look favourite to win this ball, did he? And this is the goal again. Well, he's tucked that away so nicely through his legs, but I'm not too sure he actually meant it to go there. But he'll take it anyway. Here's Roscoe. Niven just getting the ball tangled up in his feet, working hard to win the ball back, David McNiven. And he's won the free kick. I just feel the goal's really pushed they are on my back a bit. They seem to have lost a little bit of the play they had in the first ten minutes. They looked like they were quite comfortable. They feel look like a little bit shaky. And, you know, it's a shame because they, they started quite brightly. It's Warren Payton with the Lee RMI free kick. Holding a very high line at the moment, Shrewsbury. Lancaster is forward from the back. They look for McNiven. And no decision for McNiven. I think he was just suggesting there might have been the suggestion that the ball uh, struck an arm here. Uh, I think yes. he was unlucky there, Kevin, to be fair. They see them make the run. Well worked plan from the free kick. Two guys, one going in one direction. And David McNiven goes in the other. He was unlucky, really could have had a lucky break there with a good touch. News reaching us, by the way, from the Shrewsbury Town dressing room that it's a knee ligament injury for Sam Easton. Here's Daniel. Brody's made a good run inside. Dave Riddler doing a good job at the back for Shrewsbury. Oh, Miss cue there from Harrison.
Darren Moss will get forward to take the Shrewsbury Town throw. Morning Cram. Comes down under challenge from Harrison and the assistant referee. He's given the free kick away of Colin Cram and Shrewsbury. That's clumsy defending, really no need to get that tight from the throw. Forward was going nowhere, facing away from goal, now they've got a free kick. Tinson and Riddler both forward, excellent header away by Durkin. This is Ryan Lowe. It's uh, out of the ground from a man who's uh, had a good goal scoring record this season. He's uh, managed 10 from midfield, that's a tidy return for Ryan Lowe. Well, I'm sure he won't want to see that shot again. Look like he showed some nice skills, got it on the chest. Tried to flick it over the defender and then went for the big volley. Well, it's a night of uh, character for James Salisbury, the league goalkeeper. Trying to shake off that early error that led to the derby goal. Shrewsbury certainly haven't given up any hopes of catching Chester City at the moment. They have uh, three games in hand on the league leaders. First of those is here tonight. Derby goes to ground, referee says nothing wrong with that. A menacing look from Dwayne Derby to uh, the assistant referee there. Well, it's strange again, isn't it? Jerry Harrison has just give away the free kick. Same, exactly the same situation. Throw into feet. And he's got so tight. It looks like he's going to be giving away free kicks all day long. As a centre forward, in some areas you'd love that. Get the ball into your feet when they get too tight. You can always buy yourself a free kick or just roll around the corner. O'Connor. Working those 36-year-old legs hard, Martin O'Connor. Derby finding Colin Cram. Another new ball required as uh, that goes in the same direction as the previous effort from Ryan Lowe. I think it's volley in practice next week, isn't it, coming in training? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a career he's had. Colin Cram's taken him to Hamilton Academicals via Southampton, Bristol City, Crew, Spell in Holland. Oh, I, I've been everywhere, man. Brody. Gumby, Holmes, Sedgemore, and Tinson, the Shrewsbury captain, will go all the way back here with Howie. Sedgemore. Dwayne Derby penalised again, very much part of his game to put himself about, and some. Well, he takes no prisoners, Dwayne. Been around quite a while at this sort of level, and you know he's all heart. He gives everything for the game. Warren Payton. This is Andy Roscoe. He's relegated from the Football League with Exeter last season. Roscoe. The RMI is driving hard to extend their conference stay into a sixth season next time round. This is Daniel. Pulls for a handball given against Riddler. Not to similar position from which uh, Roscoe had the attempt in the early minutes of the match. Well, it looks like they're going to go the other way this time. Looks like it's going to be. Oh, is it? Gumby is there if they want to try with the right foot this time. And it's turned away by Howie. 
pretty comfortable. Made sure he got plenty behind the fist away. Scott Howie. Slightly unorthodox save, but he's done very, very well. Knew what he was doing, nice and strong wrists. Two good fists behind the ball. Got good distance on it as well. And for Daniel to chase. Holmes, it's a bit of a blind pass that from uh, Gareth Holmes, opens out nicely here for Tolly. Ryan Lowe making a good run down the right. Moss. Given away by McNiven. And uh, it's a poor ball. By Riddler, a little lucky that Daniel's first touch wasn't better. Here's Moss. I was just going to say, the ball needs to be calmed down a bit there. It's like a hot potato for the last minute or so. Eventually, Shrewsbury just kill it off. Let's start again, let's slow it down. Here's Lowe. Shrewsbury have been very strong when they've gone in front this season. In fact, they've never gone in front of a match and lost in the conference this season. This is a particularly good omen, is it, for Lee? It's Daniel tries to apply pressure for Tinson. That's good play by the goalkeeper. His players are and just looking at the RMI then just push one pushes forward. Daniel just pushes up, no one goes in to support him. Colin Crown unhappy there, he felt he was uh, bought there by Lancaster. Holmes now Peyton. Gonby. Plenty of room now for Roscoe, will it open up for Lee RMI? Plenty of red and white shirts getting forward here. Steve Brody just unable to get a touch there, running in at pace. Now Street. It's a shame, Kevin, because they got bodies forward there, Lee. Four pop people in the box, and you just feel that's when they need to score. Good ball from Lowe, excellent run there by Colin Cram. And Jerry Harrison, importantly, in the way there for Lee. I think Dwayne Lowe's run the wrong way here. He's checked out. If he'd have continued his run into that near post area, he'd have caused more problems. But he checked out, looked to get it in feet, and the chance was gone. Sedgemore. Not quite on the same wavelength as Kevin Street, who will give game chase, nevertheless. What a good spell. That crew, Alexandra, Kevin Street. Uh, actually moved to uh, Shrewsbury from uh, Bristol Rovers. We've got a last-minute equaliser when these sides met up at Hilton Park in November. 2-2 the score on that occasion. But Shrewsbury lead tonight through a goal from Dwayne Darby. This time Cram does get his free kick against Lancaster. Well, he's been asking the ref, I don't know how many times that Lancaster's getting too tight and pushing him from behind. This time Crabby gets his decision. What a room in which to run into there for Sedgemore, and this time he made sure he got everything behind it. James Salisbury. It's a good run by Sedgemore here. Yeah, it didn't look like there was too much on there, enough players around him, but he gets his shot away. And this time Salisbury gets everything behind the ball. Attempts is uh, well promising for the side next to bottom. They've had three. They only had the one on target. But one of the two for Shrewsbury has counted. This is Holmes. Now Brody. Oh, 
got a little bit tight in there, didn't it? Daniel should have just turned it round the corner. He's trying to set him up. Just turn it round the corner into the penalty area. Cause problems. Forward by Holmes. Nice layoff from McNiven. Brody spreading it wide here for Roscoe. And Brody! And a smart save by Scott Howey. Quickly down to his left to deny Steve Brody. Well, Andy Roscoe's done well to get this ball in on the half volley. The slightest of touches there, and he's really driven at the goal, Steve Brody. Save in the end by Scott Howey. Tolly. Great movement here for Moss. Eventually, Crown obliges. Now, Sedgemore. Street. It's well taken at pace by Derby. Good turn as well from Dwayne Derby. It's Kevin Street. Now, O'Connor. Put in there by Gumby, now Mario Daniel, Gumby again, shots on here for Lee, and Brody spilled by Howie and goalkeeper is down bravely to save at the feet of David McNiven, that's the area that's gained him plenty of goals this season. Yeah, good break by Lee RMI as well, some good passing, Steve Brody's struck the ball very well, just bounced in front of the goalkeeper and there's David McNiven, that's what he's good at. Getting in on the shots. I don't think this is a foul. The referee's blown the whistle. I think he's got every right to go for this. There's no injury there. I mean, I think the referee can just wait a second. I don't think he's really meant to hurt the goalkeeper. He's just gone to win the ball. Here's Moss. Going to be a good pass in the end for Ryan Lowe. And they've got a corner, Shrewsbury. Jerry Harrison. Not too happy with perhaps a goalkeeper, Salisbury there, there was no great shout for him, he just got caught on the back foot, but at least he regained his ground. And we have the opening corner. It's worked short here for Lowe and Lee RMI weren't set up for that. Away by Lancaster. This is Tolly. Now McNiven. Lee throw. They certainly have their moments in this uh, first half. Well, there are words there from Jerry Harrison at the back. He was just a bit concerned about his back three. I think I said all along they don't quite look comfortable. They don't all come up together. I think he was asking his defenders where they were. Good work again here. Wow. It's got uh, snow on it. Bouncing ball, making life difficult for Shrewsbury! Oh, brilliant! What a fine goal from Steve Brody! Well, he's had a couple of efforts already that's brought Scott Howie into action, but the Shrewsbury goalkeeper having no chance, and the man on loan from league leaders Chester has done Chester City a real favour here with the equaliser. Oh, some good play initially by Lee, really not dealt with, and that ball up in the air, well... Dreadful decision, some poor headers going in as well, they just didn't clear their lines. And this is a wonderful volley by Steve Brody, really struck it well. Not too sure what the defenders are doing for Shrewsbury. Well, that's a good finish. Well, you don't strike them better than that. No chance at all for the goalkeeper. And you can't really say that they don't deserve it either. They've played with adventure, Phil Starbuck's side. And level through on loan Steve Brody's third goal in two games. He got two against Margate in their last match. Well, I think out of the 30 minutes, Kevin, they probably deserved deserved the goal. They 
went a little bit flat after Shrewsbury scored their goal, but uh, they're right back in the game. Oh, and a mistake there by Riddler. And McNiven's route to that sloppy back pass just cut off in the end by big Dave Riddler. Yeah, they've got their tails up now as well, the RMI. Moving the ball that little bit quicker now, taking throw-ins quicker, passing quicker. Amazing what a goal does. Work here for Lancaster. Gumby. Now Harrison. Lovely dummy from Cram. He's got Ryan Lowe free to his right. Here is Lowe. Disappointing cross that by Lowe. Really should have done better. Three players to aim for, all in the box, all looking for another goal. And his delivery was poor. And the ball in there from Ryan Lowe and Lee were very much on the back foot. Please, Kevin, he didn't have to do anything special. All he needed to do was get it in front of his forwards, let them run on and just, just drifted in behind the, the backs of the RMI and he just didn't hit that sweetly enough. Hits the first offender. Here's Peyton. Good ball for Daniel. And Warren Peyton to strike the shot. And uh, ricocheting off Tinson. Peyton again. Roscoe. Held up by McNiven for Gunby. Daniel on the ground rather too easily. Right under the nose of referee Pollock. Derby. Throw goes to Shrewsbury. Jimmy Quinn's side have lost only once at Gay Meadow in the conference this season. It was to uh, Barnett. It was way back in September. Sedgemore. Here's O'Connor. Useful cross. Tolly unable to get there. Hooked clear by Andy Roscoe. Good hold up play again. He's good at that. David McNiven They're trying to spring uh, the PC Daniel clear. Just hesitated if he continued his forward movement there. There might have been something on for him. Came uh, from a lower level of non league football, Mosley in December. That's where Phil Starbuck signed him from. Cram. Sagemore. Too strong the street. Well, more live football coming up for you this week. And what football we've got for you. Champions League back again. Juventus against Deportivo La Coruña from the Stadio della Alpi. Seven o'clock Sky Sports 2. And then Sky Sports Extra. Leon against Real Sociedad. Also tomorrow, Champions League, seven o'clock. Gunby. Plenty of time here for. Roscoe. This is Peyton. Daniel. O'Connor. Lancaster. So, miscue from the Lee skipper. Manager will be happy, Clive. I think he'd be more than happy, and I think uh, they've really taken the game to Shrewsbury. As I say, I think just just that five-minute gap after Shrewsbury scored is probably the worst that they've played in this first half, and um, a lot of positive things as well going forward. They've got bodies into the box, that crosses in, a couple of free kicks in and around, and I think they've caused Shrewsbury a few problems. Jimmy Quinn will be uh, less than enamoured with what he's seen in the last uh, ten minutes since 
His side have uh, been pegged back through that excellent goal from Brody. Well, I think he'd be more than happy when they went the one goal up, but uh, he'd be very disappointed with his, uh, the way these boys defended at the back there. Some woeful heading that uh, you know, really you'd have to question as to why they didn't attack the ball a little bit better. Sometimes it's, uh, it's said in football, you know, that uh, if you don't ever let it bounce in the penalty area, and uh, unfortunately Shrewsbury have done that, and they've paid the, uh, the price for it. Sedgemore. Now Street came on earlier in the first half for the injured Easton. Now O'Connor. Good pass. Good movement off the ball too from the fullback Moss. Dwight Dwayne Darby. Just trying to hook it into space for Ryan Lowe. I'll tell you what, Kevin, if he had just hit his chest here, he's tried to bring it down, but I think if he's just bounced it off his chest towards Ryan Lowe first time, it would have been a much better decision. And trying to bring it down and then trying to hook it in for, for Lowe, who made the run. Probably wasn't the best decision. The uh, clearest of, uh, or cleanest of clearances from uh, Tinson, right across uh, the edge of their own area there, but no problems here for Moss. Cram, good movement from Tolly. Peyton struggling to stay with him. He's offside, referee will allow advantage as uh, the ball was through with Salisbury. Well, he supported well, Jamie Tolly. Got forward very, very quickly for the goal, and uh, he seems that type of player that just sees things. But unfortunately, on that occasion, could have made the pass a little bit quicker. Derby, free kick against uh, Harrison. Well, he likes to tackle Jerry Harrison, and Derby will give him plenty of opportunities. He'll be in and around that. They are in my defence all evening. That's been a good little tussle between the two of them, hasn't it? They've been very, very tight on occasions, and both big lads, you know, they're not frightened of each other, and they want to get stuck in. And you're going to get the odd missed time challenge by both of them. I feel that uh, we haven't seen the end of that tussle. Connor's free kick. Derby can't get a foot in this time. Sedgemore. That blind. Holmes. O'Connor. Time here for Kevin Street. O'Connor. Now Moss. It's wayward of Ryan Lowe. Uh, pass him to lose momentum there, didn't they? You just feel that it should have been switched a bit quicker. Kevin Street coming inside, could have switched it out to Darren Moss a little bit earlier. And in the end, Martin O'Connor took two or three touches and then got it out there. And by then, the chance had gone. Just feel there's an opportunity for Shrewsbury, free kick this time. But just feel they've got that opportunity at times to switch play a little bit quicker. And I don't think they've done that in this first period. Lots of times Darren Moss has been out there on his own, unmarked, pushing forward. Darren Tinson, the Shrewsbury captain, forward. And aimed towards him. Salisbury, the young goalkeeper, came and uh, Lou Tinson has come off worse. The free kick has gone against him. I think he's winded here, just landed awkwardly. He's jumped early. Over the top of the defender. The goalkeeper's taken it nice and cleanly. Tinson just landed awkwardly as he's hit the deck. Painful one. And they haven't paid to get in. They've got the vantage point behind the Shrewsbury goal. But another good crowd here at Gay Meadow where they've been averaging over 4,000 this season, more than they were getting in Division 3 last time round. But what a 12 months it's been for these Shrewsbury fans. Just about a year ago they were playing Chelsea and Everton in the FA Cup and weren't even dreaming about the 
horror of relegation, Clive, and what a topsy-turvy season it turned out to be for them. Oh, I think that man there, Jimmy Quinn, you've got to take your hat off to him. He's done an excellent job. Well, it must be difficult. You get relegated out of the league and, you know, heads are down and people are, you know, not looking forward to the, the grounds they've got to go and play at. You know, sometimes they, they look at that as a bit of a disadvantage as well. And he's picked them up and he's gently got on with the game. And, you know, we haven't heard too much about them in the conference this season. And they're creeping up further and further up the table. And all the credit really must go to Jimmy, the way he shuffled his pack and got his boys' heads up and, and got them playing some decent football as well. Well, I know Jimmy Quinn has been happy that his side have not been up there to be shot at, if you like, and up there in the top two all season. He's quite happy for them to go about their business quietly, confidently. At the very least, Shrewsbury have to be looking at the playoffs. But they haven't given up hope yet of going up as outright champions. There's a lot of football still to be played in this conference season. This is Ryan Lowe. Good try. Just for a moment, it looked like it might be creeping into the bottom right-hand corner of Salisbury's net. Well, I think it was uh, further wide than the initial angle suggested. Yeah, I think it was always going wide. I think when you see the goalkeeper dive like that, when you're at the wrong angle, you think, well, maybe it's a little bit closer. But it's uh, it's gone well, well right. But, but Ryan Lowe showed some some good speed and some good pace. You know, and we know he scores goals. You know, it's nice to see a young lad coming through and, and, and taking the game by the scruff of the neck and saying, well, every opportunity I'm going to try and get on the edge of the box. That's obviously how he scores his goals. Let's have a look at the uh, attempts. And there we are, Lee RMI have levelled it up. And there you go, they're ahead in terms of uh, efforts on target. So well worthy of their 1-1 scoreline. Trying to make it even better now with Pate. Once again, they sprung plenty forward. No sure touch there from McNiven. He'll be disappointed with that as well, McNiven. Had a great opportunity there just to spin it in behind. First touch was poor. This is where Shrewsbury break very, very quickly. Cram finding low. Second bite at the cross here for Ryan Lowe. Well, again, Ryan Lowe, is, he's sprung from the edge of the box. He's gone fully 70 yards to make the run forward. Gets into that supporting position, goes past the centre forward. And his delivery didn't come into the box. I'm sure Cramming would have loved to see it come in. But they get themselves a corner. Once again, Tinson and Riddler, the centre-backs forward for O'Connor's corner. And the header won by Dave Riddler. Well, he's won it nice and cleanly, as he didn't quite get the power in that he needed. 12 yards from goal. Well, that was easy for James Salisbury. Dave Riddler played for Macclesfield alongside Tinson in the Football League last season. <laughs> Daniel. Here's Brody. Just on a few occasions in the first half, he's proving difficult for Shrewsbury to pick up. Steve Brody playing in the the hole, as we call it, behind the two strikers, McNiven and Daniel. Here is McNiven and Gunby. Well, he went for the glory strike there, all power, but sadly no direction for Steve Gunby. Oh, he did go for the power, but it was good build-up as well. Ball into McNiven, just lays it off nice and sweetly. As you see, Gumby there just going for maximum power as hard as he could. And it slices off his boot and goes well wide. Here's Moss. Durkin. Now Lancaster. Gunby. I know Jimmy Quinn was saying that his side have often been better this season in the second half than in the opening 45 minutes. He said he almost tore the, the paint off the dressing room last Tuesday after the first half performance against Woking they improved immeasurably in the second half Shrewsbury we're going to see a repeat here but 
Lee RMI have come here on the back of that 4-2 heartening home win against Margate nine days ago and have played very well in the first half. It's work for Durkin. Street. It's nicely worked by Shrewsbury. This is Jamie Tolly. Ryan Lowe wanted the pass. Tolly didn't deliver it. Instead, he finds Moss. Plenty waiting for the cross. Uh, headed behind by Harrison. Well, it's a shame that Solly didn't see the pass as well. Again, Ryan Lowe using his pace, gets him behind so, so quickly, and the space was there for Tolly. And he decides to go wide to Moss. In the end, Lee RMI just about managed to scrape it away for another corner. Once again, Riddler and Tinson forward for the Shrewsbury corner. O'Connor delivers, goalkeeper commands. Now Holmes. Lovely pass from McNiven, finding Payton. That'll be a corner for Leo Mai. It was a quick break, a good break as well. We'll just have enough time for this corner. Martin Lancaster, the Lee skipper, is forward from the back. Work short here for McNiven, back with Payton. This is Holmes. Well, we've talked a lot tonight about uh, David McNiven's goals, but I've been very impressed with his link-up play tonight. Well, it's the last action of a first half in which Shrewsbury drew first blood through big Dwayne Darby but Steve Brody scoring a fine equaliser for Lee RMI it really was a clean strike from the man on loan from Chester City half time at Gay Meadow it's 1-1 Great week of football and the weekend football looking very attractive beginning on Saturday at midday. Bolton here at the Gay Meadow. It's 1-1, it's something of a surprise as well. Those attempts are a surprise because second bottom Lee RMI have had a, as many as the side that still believe they can challenge Chester in going back to the Football League at the first time of asking. Um, no, nothing too much in that. It's been pretty much a, a, an even game and a, a clean game as well. But it's 1-1 and there's no doubt, uh, Ian Snowden, that uh, Phil Starbuck will be uh, the happier manager at half-time, won't he? We had a doubt, Rob. I'm sure Jimmy Quinn will have some harsh words to say to his team. Because they got off to a great start, to be honest, the goal. And then you'd think you'd expect them to go on from there. And they haven't. I think the RMI have definitely been the better better of the two teams. They started brightly, did the home side and they had a, a decent penalty claim. Um, what was your view? Yeah, good thinking, quick free kick, played into the box, Colin Cram, that's when he's at his best, twisting and turning. I think the referee got it wrong. I think the uh, the commentary team, Kevin and Clive, didn't think so, but I thought it was a penalty, Just I thought there, he brought him that, down. That Martin Lancaster with, with the, the, the initial challenge, uh, Rob Pollock, the referee, who once sent you off, of course, so he must know what he's doing. <laughs> he certainly <laughs> did, it was uh, Doncaster versus Southport, I'll never forget it, and uh, he's still out improved in my eyes, Rob. <laughs> But then they went ahead, and uh, at that stage you were beginning to fear for, for Lee RMI because they they did start very brightly, Shrewsbury, didn't they? Yeah, they did, and that, that's where um, Shrewsbury have got to get Martin O'Connor on the ball a lot, lot more there. We've just seen body strength, played a lovely ball, and then Ryan Law played uh, Dwayne Darby in. I thought he was going to go for the corner, the opposite corner, and uh, I'm sure the keeper did, and he'll be disappointed that he's, he's let it go near post through his legs as well. James, it's not a great goal. James Salisbury on loan, his first game on loan from Wigan. And uh, yeah, I think genuinely he was maybe thinking he was going to try and tuck it in the far corner, wasn't he? I think that's where Dwayne was intending to go, to be quite honest. He's looked up, but uh, he's not caught it right. It has gone through his legs. The keeper will be disappointed on that one. But instead of kicking on as we thought they might, Shrewsbury, it was Lee RMI who began to get a little foothold in the game. And uh, this man, Steve Brody, who's actually on low from chest, it began to cause all kinds of problems. Yeah, I've known Steve quite a long time as well. He's a lively little player. Left foot shot, not his strongest foot, to be quite honest. But uh, 
He's got a strike on goal. He's made the keeper make a save on a couple of occasions there. David McNiven always sniffing, looking for the goals. I don't think it would have free kick. The referee get a free kick. But David's got going in that situation. It has run loose and uh, he is looking for them opportunities. Uh, apparently took the paint off the walls, did Jimmy Quinn, uh, in the game half-time uh, Shrewsbury against Woking. I think he'd be doing the same things now, especially with the defending for uh, the, the, the really gifted, well, it was a terrific finish, but, but certainly offered the opportunity to, for Lee to get back into it. Yeah, Lee was definitely pushing on at this time, and uh, that's a rash clearance, that, it, that could have gone anywhere. The two defenders are looking at each other, thinking, Who's going to get it? And nobody's took command, but take nothing away from Steve Brody's finish. It's a tremendous right foot volley, but the defending here. Did they not one, want to head it? Yeah, <laughs> one of them's got to got to shout, got to take command of the situation, and they've let it bounce. But you can't argue with that finish. Fantastic. It's a tremendous volley. Yeah, three and two he's got on low from Chester Mark. Right, I'd be absolutely delighted to see that one go in. It was an absolutely top draw finish. What now? I mean, you, you called it a Shrewsbury at the beginning of the game. <laughs> <laughs> They can't, they, they've got to be better than that, haven't they, in the second half? They've got to raise the tempo. They've got to get this crowd involved, Rob. It's been, he's been very, very quiet, and there's a good crowd in, but they've not really given them anything exciting to get about. And it is... Uh, they've got to get the crowd involved. They've got to raise the tempo. It's as simple as that. I tell you what, get the crowd involved, and uh, what an incentive for Shrewsbury Town tonight. They could go third if they win. They've not been at the best in the first half. 1-1 one, one at half-time. The second half is coming next. Clive UEFA. It is 1 1 at half time. Who's going to break the deadlock? Clive Walker, Kevin Keatings. Thanks, Rob. And Lee RMI, who've been in the bottom three of the conference for the last five months, have performed very creditably here. And I quite agree with Ian Snowden's observation that they were just about the better of the two teams after what had been a fairly good uh, opening for Shrewsbury when they got the lead. But once uh, Steve Brody levelled it up, and Lee RMI were well worthy of at least being on terms. No additional substitutions, by the way, to the one enforced upon uh, Shrewsbury in the first half when Sam Easton went off with a knee ligament injury and was replaced by Kevin Street. No Luke Rogers for Shrewsbury, the second top scorer. He's suspended tonight. Here's Ryan Lowe getting forward. Checked well by Harrison. Niven. His holder play has been superb. Oh, think, by Durkin. Just going to say, Kevin, sorry, I think that's something that David McNiven has shown today that uh, not only does he score goals, but he links the play up well. If he's got bodies running from deep, he'll find them. He's played league football before, nearly 70 league appearances with Oldham and York. And you wouldn't bet against him returning to the league before too long. Certainly plenty of clubs tracking him. Phil Starbuck won't thank me for uh, highlighting that. He was wants to open talks with McNiven about a new deal. Not tomorrow morning, right after this match. Here's Tolly. He's trying to keep the Predators at bay and you can't blame him. He knows that the manager just along from him in the Shrewsbury dugout might be just one of those who will be sniffing for a serial goal scorer? Derby. Street making the overlapping run. It's well checked though by Holmes. He's done well, Gareth Holmes. Dwayne Derby was always going to bite back at him. Where's Don Weathers as well there, Gareth Holmes, is he? Really didn't deserve it, but he's gone through two, three tackles and run away with the ball as well. Actually works in the Derby County Academy. He said he was the older brother of uh, Lee Holmes, who's on the staff at Pride Park. <laughs> Tinson's header. Now Sedgemore. Free kick, foul and cram. What uh, Lee RMI have done very well, Clive, is uh, quiet in the crowd here at Gay Meadow. Absolutely, I mean, we were thinking about that, talking about that at half-time, Kevin, and 
you know, a big crowd that they have here at Shrewsbury. Very, very quiet in that first half. We thought of after they scored the goal, they'd have got behind their team, but they have been quiet, and that's all credit to the RMI. This is Harrison. Looks for the pacey Daniel, but well tracked by Riddler. Lee not without their support, the worst supported club in the conference, but the Hardy Souls have made a relatively short journey here. And well happy with what they're seeing. Well, I think they'd be more than happy, Kevin. I think first half, the RMI really did take the game to Shrewsbury and, and all credit to being uh, on level terms at half-time. And, and they've done it again in the second half in the opening few minutes. And really passing the ball about well when they do get it forward it's just sometimes you feel when it goes into the back three they look like they're struggling at times but so far so good in several areas of the field they haven't looked like a side next to bottom late whistle I think the referee was looking to see if any advantage accrued Robert Pollock yeah, I think he's done well there Mr Pollock I think he's done well he's tried to play the advantage saw the challenge come in just a one foot stuck out just Made him stumble a little bit, but Pollock has uh, just allowed the play to see if uh, Lee Aramai could continue going forward. And when they lost possession, he brought the play back. I mean, that's good refereeing. It's given Lee Aramai the opportunity to get Martin Lancaster forward, their captain, and centre-back. I'll tell you what, the, the three kicks they had in the first half, Kevin, I thought they'd organised very, very well. And I think this time it looks like they're going to be just the same. Unfortunately, it's all about the delivery, though. <laughs> well, Warren Payton gets a second bite now. This is Gunby, who did well with Payton in the middle of the field for Lee. And he's won a free kick, fouled by Tolly. Well, I think the two centre midfield players, Warren Payton and Steve Gunby, have done very, very well in that first half. You know, Jamie Tolly, you know, does get back the park very, very well, and Martin O'Connor, very experienced. Two they're up against. And the aforementioned pair over the free kick, Gumby and Payton. Pretty central, as you can see, to Scott Howie's goal, but it would need a strike of extraordinary uh, quality to beat him from this range. Gumby's going to have a try, nevertheless. And he hasn't scored yet, it's only his third game for Lee since his recent move from Berry. Free oh. transfer. It was a little bit ambitious, wasn't it, from that distance? Sometimes, though, when players do the strike like that towards a goal, it rebounds off defenders and falls to a striker's foot and uh, a little bit closer to the goal, and you know, they get their rewards. Ryan Low causing a problem there for a moment to Peyton. And Durkin reacted to Ryan Low, who was trying to win back possession. Just dived in at the last minute. Oh, we see him just going into the side of Durkin. Referee, just a quiet word, rightly so. Bit of a lunge. Interesting to see how the RMI lost the pace. They are not only part timers, they have enjoyed an extra day's training this week. If that's the right way to describe an extra day's training, the players. Uh, Normally uh, adopt a Tuesday, Thursday attitude, but uh, we're training Saturdays. Phil Starbuck said they were working on a lot of set pieces, one or two aspects of the game where he felt they needed to improve. And certainly they're going to have to shore things up at the back if they are going to survive. At the moment, doing very well against the side, looking to go third in the table, Shrewsbury. Momentum building here for Shrewsbury. What's on favourites to gain three points here? Gumby. McNiven. Now Tolly. Good change of pace there. Warren Payton struggling hard to keep with him. Street. 
Sedgemore. Kevin Street again. Dorkin in the way, but uh, Cram got to the loose ball first. Harrison importantly getting his body in front of Dwayne Darby. It's back in towards Darby again. And away by Lancaster. Crowd behind that Leo Remai goal were baying for a penalty. Weren't too many vehement claims from Darby, to be fair. Here's Lowe. Good play from Ryan Lowe. Martin O'Connor under pressure. And the final touch came off Neil Dirk, and it'll be a Shrewsbury corner. Penalty claim. Well, I think Jerry Harrison's uh, wrong side, really, for me. He should be inside, closest to the goalkeeper. Slight touch, I'm not too sure if there was too much in it again. Well, seen them given, though. Martin O'Connor will take the corner. Touched off a Lee head. That'll be another corner. As soon as strikers feel defenders touch tight, you'll know well enough, Clive, you, you're always going to go down like Dwayne Darby did. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't blame him. As I said in the first half, for me, Jerry Harrison just gets too, too tight to his players. In that situation there, for me, he's, he's the wrong side as well. Harrison again marking Darby. A header, that's a good one, and a fine save from Salisbury to deny Darren Moss. Well, this is a good delivery. Good header by Darren Moss, he's just going away from guys, just trying to deflect it towards the goal. A little bit too central, really, James Salisbury just managing just to put a hand up. If that had been in the corner, I think it would have been a goal. In by O'Connor, goalkeeper under pressure, oh, off the post. Thumped in by Tolly. But Andy Roscoe got the touch on the line, off the inside of the post, and Lee survived. But only just... Yeah, he's actually kicked it onto the post himself. Well, oh, get bodies behind the ball there, was it? Some desperate defending. Well, it shows the benefit of the man on the line, but he got lucky, Roscoe. Derby gets away from Lancaster. And find the right balance to trouble the, the RMI goal, but how close Shrewsbury were here to taking the lead. Well, they were, and again, a good delivery, in. and the goalkeeper really didn't get enough on the ball at all. Very fortunate. Here we see it again. He's cut with two fists, but it, he hasn't got a clean punch on it at all. The goalkeeper. Maybe the side next to bottom have deserved that little bit of luck for the effort and no little skill at times that they put into this match. They have a free kick. 18 months since Lee RMI have come behind in a game to win. What a night to do it. Phil Starbuck said he wanted his side to go out and prove they were better than their league position suggests. Some way to doing that so far. Moss, he was brave. Referee's uh, applying for the advantage here. But Warren Payton might well be looking at a yellow card when the ball goes dead. As he uh, certainly got plenty of Darren Moss. This is Tolly. Header only for kindly for Gunby. Brody. Plenty of time here for Roscoe, the man who's had a touch on the line, sent the ball under the post. All the way through for Mario Daniel. And here comes the booking for Warren Payton. Oh, I think he knew he was going to get this as well. He Looking at the referee, see what he was going to do as soon as the ball went dead. I think he was just a little bit late with his challenge, and, you know, rightly so. Good decision by the referee, it was a yellow card. It was a poor challenge, a little bit late. Well, it's the first uh, card of the night. It's a uh, game that's been played in a good spirit, really. That's a genuine attempt, I think, for the ball, but uh, he'll tell you he got there as quick as he could, but he was late. 
he's almost <laughs> seeing it again though. He's, he's almost trying to pull out Kevin. He knew he was a little bit late and he already made the uh, the run forward and he just tried to pull out at the death, but uh, the referee deemed it as a foul and deserved a yellow card. Well, the RMI only survived in the conference on the final day of last season. A 1-0 win at Kettering, enough to keep them up. But if they can get something here to add to that last win at home to Margate, it's going to give them belief that they can still escape. Here's low. And Tolly. Good ball into the path of Ryan Lowe. Options left and right here. Darby made his run into a rather crowded area in the end. Yeah, I think Dwayne Darby's run the wrong way here. I think he should take his run a lot wider. You know, Ryan Lowe's got lots of pace, and you know, if you leave those gaps at the back, he'll exploit them. And Dwayne Darby's gone inside and taken the defender with him. Maybe getting to the point soon when Jimmy Quinn will be thinking about a, another substitution. He's got a uh, striker in Jody Banim, who's got a prolific goal scoring uh, record further down the non league ladder. Might see him before the evening's out. But at the moment, the RMI are holding Shrewsbury at bay. Play goal kick, and now are gone. Jimmy Quinn has actually been playing himself uh, this season, only sparingly. 44, the man alongside me was playing in this league at the age of 42, but uh, he's taken it to extremes, isn't he, Clive? Well, <laughs> he's he is. very fit, to be fair, Jimmy. He is very fit, Jimmy, and um, you know, to be fair to him, the good thing about when you're the manager, you can be selective when you play. <laughs> And I think uh, you know if you're selective, but uh, you, if you feel like playing, that's what he's uh, that's what he's done. And I think it will keep him playing for as long as he wants to play. Moving ball went against Lee there, and how frustrated is Steve Brody? It's unlucky, wasn't it? Well, it's good thinking by Brody. Free kick to more leisurely pace now for Warren Payton. Both Harrison and Lancaster forward. And by Warren Payton. Cleared by Lowe. Durkin. No question that Shrewsbury have missed Sam Easton. Down that left-hand side. Man on the ball now, Kevin Street came on for him. No disrespect to him, but Easton, a real old-fashioned uh, hug the touchline winger. And they have uh, missed that width down that side. Well, so I think it's something they could have done in the first half a lot more often was to switch play quicker, Shrewsbury, for me. Opportunity's been there for them, and I think they might just have stretched Lee a little bit more if they'd have done it. Obviously missed Sam Aston out there wide on that left-hand side. Well, he was going to miss uh, Aston the next two games anyway due to suspension. Those games are uh, against uh, Forest Green and Gravesend. And Shrewsbury try and stay on the coattails of Hereford and Chester, the league leaders. Martin Lancaster himself, former Chester player. This is former club going to regain their Football League status. Certainly looks that way at the moment. Brilliant job they're doing of it at the moment. They are grinding out. I suppose it's uh, being a bit unfair to Chester to say they're grinding out the results, but they were behind again against Burton at the weekend. Came from behind to win. Great character in that squad, there's no question about that. Shrewsbury working the free kick short here. And Ryan Lowe closer to the corner flag then. Salisbury's goal. Well, I don't know if that's frustration in the shot. It was a poor one. 
He's not really hit the target yet, and the crowd have been very, very quiet. We just felt that they were a little bit of a groan went in when the shot came in from Ryan Lowe. And you wonder why, you know, they're a big crowd here at Shrewsbury. Need, the, need really to get behind their team for the rest of this season to push them further forward. Switch now from Phil Starbuck. And Mario Daniel is coming off. And he will be replaced by Damien Whitehead. Whitehead, who's in his uh, second spell with Lee. Played with Jimmy Quinn at Northwich last season. Can he come on and damage Quinn Shrewsbury here, I wonder? Well, that's a good change. I don't think we've seen too much of Mario Daniel in this uh, second half. We saw him a few times in the first period. Well, chance now for Damian Whitehead to get involved. Brave by Brody. He's gone for the head. I don't think... I just think he's then suggesting that the boot was high. I think he's gone with the header, but he, he put his arm up to protect himself because he saw the boot come in. Here we see it again. Just the arm goes up. He just got caught across the arm. Good job he did. He might have got it in the face. This is Colin Cram. I think uh, Jimmy Quinn will be disappointed with his two centre forwards as well in this second uh, second half. Good ball though from Derby right. Salisbury down well to make the save and importantly hold on. But that was better from Shrewsbury. Yeah, he's found some space, Ryan Low, hasn't he? Not defending particularly well here, Lee. But there we see his first touch from me. Just took him a little bit too far away. He was just stretching for the shot and didn't get the power. I was saying, I think Jimmy Quinn would be disappointed with Brian Derby and uh, Colin Cram in this second half. As you can see, 20 attempts in 65 minutes of football. But, uh, pleasing game on the eye, and uh, Lee RMI are still holding their own here. Bonus on Shrewsbury, the big favourites here. And Harrison doing well against Derby again. That was good defending from Jerry Harrison. This is a great header as well. He's really done well there, Jerry Harrison. Been a good tussle between he and Derby. Yeah, it's Put him in a boxing ring and uh, <laughs> buy a ticket to watch. It's been great, hasn't it, the challenges we've seen, but he's done well there, Harrison. Here's McNiven. Sedgemore is back. Holmes. out Shrewsbury Town throw Shrewsbury at the moment fifth in the conference two points behind Aldershot and Barnet ten adrift of Graham Turner's Hereford but with four games in hand but all the chasing pack behind league leaders Chester hoping that Chester slip up in what is a tough running in the last uh, six or seven games for Mark right side, at least on paper. Here's Moss, who gets away from Roscoe, it's Darren Moss! And it'll fall for Ryan Lowe this time, Harrison in the way again. As if his very life depended on it. It's Harrison to clear again. Back in by O'Connor. That's a nudge, offside anyway. Well, he's redeemed himself a little bit, Jerry Harrison. Just really wasn't having the best game, but this is a good run. And they get him round the back, and it's this challenge here that he just throws himself and gets in there to stop Brian Lowe from hitting the target. Works uh, up at Burnley in their academy, former Burnley player, made over 200 league appearances, Jerry Harrison, with the likes of Burnley and Watford and Bristol City. Whitehead full of running. Forced the error out of Sedgemore. Into the last quarter of the match. Oh, 
more movement on the uh, Shrewsbury bench. Harrison under pressure here from Cram. It's uh, loose of the arm. Oh. Referee Pollock says chest. Well, it was most definitely the left arm of Jerry Harrison. Now, if Lee score here, it'll be controversial. Brody passes wayward of uh, McNiven. There's Harrison again. Asking a lot of Whitehead. Those fresh legs will force a uh, throw in. It was most definitely the use of an arm from Harrison. I'm not too sure if there wasn't a push first in the first place. Well, he gets away with it. Thing about Jerry Harrison, he cannot be on it. He's an honest player, and he gives you 110 percent, as we've seen this evening. Here's low, or good pass, and Street getting away from Holmes. Ryan Low again. Shrewsbury bench and a delighted Jimmy Quinn who was a great striker in his own wonderful career would have been the first to admire that there was no chance for Salisbury inch perfect from Ryan Lowe who set off the initial move well he did and he's done well here chemistry just held the play up and look at the space that Ryan Lowe's got and he just curled it into the bottom corner Wonderfully placed. Street just holds the ball up, lays it inside. Well, I don't know if there's many questions. I think you can ask maybe a, a going to be critical, a little bit of a question about the goalkeeper. It's not right in the corner. And you might just suggest he was slightly out of position, but uh, take nothing away from the goal scorer. It's a tidy finish. Well, would you believe Jimmy Quinn was ready to bring Ryan Lowe off? Not now. Well, I would be surprised if he had it done. He, for me, he's, he's done quite well. He's got forward, he's got into the box, his shoot has not been the best up to that point. Uh, it was the two centre forwards for me that have uh, been a little bit disappointing. Seventh in the conference, 11th goal for Ryan Lowe in all competitions this season. And what a beauty. Now, Lee RMI have to come back again. They have a corner. He's inevitably forward. So too the skipper, Lancaster. I was just thinking we haven't seen too much of uh, that goal scorer David McNiven in this second period. I was just wondering if this is a, a time maybe if something drops to his feet, he might just put it in the back of the net. And by Holmes. This is Gumby. Peyton's cross. It's going to fall now for Andy Roscoe. Ooh, and uh, that could have quite easily deflected into the path of McNiven. Oh, just happy to clear the lines there, Shrewsbury. Well, maybe they just learnt a lesson from in the first half when they scored. They didn't clear their lines quite well enough. This time, really hacking the ball away. So they get their shape back again. Problem here for Harrison. You see the challenge by Martin O'Connor. Didn't seem too much wrong with it. Landed awkwardly. And it certainly livened up the faithful at Gay Meadow. Brilliant goal from Ryan Lowe. Found the space here, took aim. And found the far corner quite superbly. Well, he's done well. He actually had to try it really. His first touch wasn't the best. He's dug it out. So he's given that short, sharp back lift and drifted it into that far side netting. Well, Harrison needing further treatment. Oh, well, he's 
it's this rule where he has to go back uh, off the field in order to then come back on still uh, gets us rather puzzled brought in by FIFA that rule to stop time wasting but you know, sometimes it affects the team that uh, are on the back foot especially when they're defending and players like Harrison go off but he's back on now well, I must admit, Kevin, it's a crazy rule, and uh, nobody in football can understand why it's there. But uh, there it is, and we have to abide by the rules. Here's O'Connor. Kevin Crown. There isn't a problem here for Lancaster. Crown! Twisting, turning, and very nearly finding a Shrewsbury third. Delightful ball here by Martin O'Connor, just on the reverse there, finds Cram, good first touch, and he turns Martin Lancaster inside and out. I'd love to have seen him hit the ball across the face of the goal though, aim for that far post, when we get a touch from a defender or one of your forwards, just stick it in the back of the net. Dwayne Darby, is going to make way. One or two boos from the Shrewsbury fans. Uh, Dwayne Darby's name being chanted by the Shrewsbury supporters. Happy with his effort and his goal. And he will be replaced by Jody Bannon. Uh, here's a man who has scored prolifically further down the non league ladder. Came from Radcliffe Borough. And Darby, not very happy at all, stormed immediately down the tunnel. Here's Roscoe. Well, I'm not really surprised at the change there, to be honest. So a few moments ago, I thought the front two weren't giving Shrewsbury enough. The movement was good in the first half, but I just feel that they've been a bit stifled in this second period. Just need a little bit of freshening up by Jimmy Quint. And maybe Jody Bannon can give them that. Here's Harrison. He showed some good skills as well there, Harrison. Maybe he feels a little bit better now Dwayne Darby's gone off. Harrison with the free kick. Still time here for Lee. This is McNiven, snapshot, reflected away by Darren Tinson. Here's O'Connor. Asking a lot there of Bannum, Salisbury to tidy up. Tinson wasn't uh, backing out of that, was he, against Gumby? The chase on here between the Street and Holmes, Street the winner. <laughs> it was a good old tussle, wasn't it? And little Kevin Street was penalised in the end after appearing to win the initial battle. It was all about a, a race, wasn't it? It was just all about pace. Kevin Street, he thought had initially won the ball cleanly, but uh, gave away the free kick. Here's a switch now for Lee. Andy Roscoe has come off. And on in his place, former Bursco player Chris McHale, who was part of the Bursco squad that played in last season's FA Trophy final. How many footballers do you know, Clive, who trained to be a molecular scientist? There's your man. Well, there's the first one. <laughs> what does that mean, Kevin? <laughs> I thought you might say that. <laughs> no way forward for Holmes, so back here with Gunby. 
Helped on by Brody, and that's how he's. This is low. Now Bannon uh, won't get there. But what uh, goals he brings to Shrewsbury's promotion challenge. 97 goals in 125 games for Ratcliffe Borough. A step up the non-league ladder, full-time football at Shrewsbury. And he says a great challenge that Jimmy Quinn has given him and hopes to repay him with goals. It'll take Shrewsbury back into the league at the first attempt. Here's Lowe, scorer of that excellent second Shrewsbury goal, has them in the lead. Good play here, Graham finding Moss, just beyond Tolly, it's going to break now for Kevin Street. And they didn't know too much about that, the lead defenders, Street again, now O'Connor. Extra fitness beginning to tell here now, full-time club. Ahead against the part-timers. McNiven reading the back header and forcing the error out of Tinson. That's brilliant from David McNiven. Wasn't giving up any lost courses there. Well, he's always looking for that one mistake or half chance that he could get on the end of. And starved of service in this second half. Astonishing record though. 21 goals and a side battling relegation. Lancaster, the skipper, takes up a position at the near post. It's beyond him. And it's a chance now. Oh, and McHale and his effort charged down from point blank range. But he could have made himself a very positive substitution there, Chris McHale. Well, and he needed someone in the right place at the right time. Great corner in, good pace on it. Just dropping over the head of Martin, jo uh, Martin O'Connor. More live football coming up, Champions League returns. Juventus Deportivo La Coruña should be a great match. Deportivo one up from the first leg, Sky Sports 2 at 7. And then an equally intriguing clash, French against Spanish, Lyon Sociedad, Sky Sports Sector tomorrow from 7. Now Banner, held up by Durkin, defending by Neil Durkin. Here's Whitehead. McHale and uh, McNiven just caught on the back foot. Well, Clive, what have you made overall of uh, Shrewsbury? Uh, one of the favourites uh, to get promotion this season. Have they lived up to that for you tonight? Um, I think I was probably expecting a little bit more out of them, to be honest, Kevin. I think when they go went a goal up like they did, problem here for David McNiven, charging the ball down from the goalkeeper. He's going to get a yellow card for this. You can't make any movement sideways when you stand in front of a goalkeeper, and that's what he's done, gets his yellow card. I was just saying that when Shrewsbury went ahead, here we see it again. Uh, he just made that sideways movement. And unfortunately, you can't do that in today's game. But uh, I thought once they went a goal up Shrewsbury, they would uh, go on and, and really take the game to, to Lee RMI. And they didn't quite give me that something special that perhaps would suggest that they can threaten the, the top two anyway that I've seen this season but uh, I think they're a strong enough side they're good enough for the playoffs and I think they can put a little run together now maybe they can threaten a little bit closer at the very least Shrewsbury fans will be expecting is the playoffs Jimmy Quinn takes off Jamie Tolley and will replace him with another youngster, David Edwards, only 18, played the second half against Woking last Tuesday for the injured Martin O'Connor, now comes under partner O'Connor, the heart of the Shrewsbury midfield. Yeah, I think Jimmy Quinn just feels he needs some fresh legs for the last 10 minutes or so of this game. Wise decision there. Can the part-timers lift themselves for a strong last seven minutes or so here?
I think physically they haven't really wavered though Kevin looking at them they've really stuck to their task Leo Ramay and uh, played some decent football when they've had the got themselves into the right positions just feel you know, looking at uh, what Phil Starbucks said you know is, uh, is, is true they probably don't look a second from bottom side and um, you know if they can take take that into the rest of the season uh, they might just well escape Free kick against Peyton, already been booked, so he needs to be careful. Dave Riddler, in no great hurry to take the free kick. It's not a bad habit to have, though, when you're not playing at your best, or to be gaining the wins, chipping away at the lead that the uh, top two have got particularly on the rest at the moment still have those games in hand Shrewsbury still in the FA Trophy of course as well they play their near neighbours Telford in a replay for the right to meet Jeff King's Canvey Island in the semi-final in the semi-final will be between uh, Aldershot and Hinsford problem here for Tinson incidentally you'll be able to see the FA Trophy final live with us on Sky Sports from Villa Park. Yeah, David McNiven didn't see him coming, he sort of stooped into it. McNiven just tried to hook it over his own shoulder. No intention there. Vincent's just uh, got a boot on the head, but I think he'd be OK. Big, tough centre-back. They don't worry about things like that. Shrewsbury skipper will be OK. 34 now, Darren Tinson, and it's been a real rock at the back for Jimmy Quinn this season. Only eight goals Shrewsbury have conceded all season here at Gay Meadow in the league. Well, this is where that rule's silly, Kevin, about you said a few moments ago about the player going off to come back on again. How much has this slowed the game down? You know, you look at the rules they make and just can't because understand. Look at the reaction of Jimmy Quinn. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. Peyton. This cue from Durkin. Bannum just leaning there on Harrison. Here's Gumby. Plenty of lead players forward, but no great quality in the ball forward there from Steve Gumby. Harrison's header may be a bit short. Durkin had to react smartly. Here's McNiven. Harrison. This is McHale. No room though for Chris McHale. Here's Bannum. Three minutes plus stoppage time. Shrewsbury holding his slender advantage here against Lee RMI. Oh, low under heavy pressure here. Bannon. Good cultural, I think we'll call that from Harrison. <laughs> I think this is a terrible challenge. Clumsy. He's just the ball's flicked up off of Bannum's boot, and he just thought, Well, I'm going to go straight through the player. There he goes, straight through him from behind. Seen a few of those on Hackney Marshes, Clive? Well, I think I felt a few, Kevin, <laughs> and uh, I felt a little bit there for Bannum, but uh, I said earlier, I don't think he does it with any intention. Just look at his face there. He's uh... forward by Moss, and uh, Lancaster. Oh, he was lucky there. 
he'll tell you it was a dummy. It's a push on Whitehead. Now a chance for Lee to spring players forward here now. now can Lancaster or someone for Lee RMI find something to their advantage here? Less than two minutes, plus time to be added on. Warren Payton to fly it in. Scott Howie opting to punch, right decision. Look at the room here now as Lee had sent plenty forward. There aren't too many getting back either. This is Colin Cram. Harrison's there to plug the gap. Here's Bannon. Shrewsbury will settle for the corner. I think Cram's made the wrong decision again there. Should have passed to Bannon right hand side in lots of space. Here's Lowe. Good burst into the box there from Ryan Lowe, but no quality on the resulting cross, but he looks as though he's going to be the match winner. And a goal to remember for the former Bursco player. And he's made a good little run again there into the penalty area, and I just think you've got to get your head down and get the ball across the face of the goal, doesn't matter how it comes in, when you're that tight to the goal, just drift it across the face of the goalkeeper's six-yard box. And said he gets his head up and then the ball drifts away to that far post area for a goal kick. This is Bannon. Here's Harrison. There are going to be three minutes stoppage time. There are many who thought it would have been a comfortable win for Shrewsbury. It's been far from that. Low. And that will be comfortable for Salisbury, who needs to get this ball down the field and quick. McHale. Header away is by uh, Tinson. Now low. Bannon. Or rather, it's uh, Cram. Beautifully through the legs of uh, Durkin. Bannon. This will be a third here for Shrewsbury. Did Colin Crown have in mind there? Forward by Harrison. It's work here still for Sedgemore. This is Lancaster. Well, oh, Phil Starbuck. We'll see light at the end of the tunnel, even if his side go on to lose this, but he's urging his players forward for a dramatic late equaliser. Just over a minute left. Payton. This is McHale. Heels for handball, referee Pollock says no. Can they get this ball into the danger area? It's Warren Payton. Four waiting for a cross. Blocked by Ryan Lowe, thumped away by Darren Moss. Oh, I think that's something they haven't done, Lee, in these last sort of five or six minutes. You'd have thought they'd have put bodies forward and, and just tried to pinch that last that second goal to, to equalise and put the ball in the penalty area. Good advantage played there by referee Pollock, but he'll pull up play now. There's a foul on Whitehead. And the Shrewsbury players surrounding Robert Pollock and suggesting there might have been a decision their way initially, but this is when uh, Whitehead was taken out. It's a poor challenge, isn't it? A little like a tired challenge for me as well. I was just worried about Lee, though. I thought, you know, just saying a few moments ago, get the ball into the penalty, and they're still trying to run and take defenders on. 
few minutes to go. You should be just getting it in there as often as you can and hope you can get something. Yellow card then for Dave Riddler. James Salisbury's coming up as well, the league goalkeeper. This should be good. Oh, what a story on his debut. If he can provide an equaliser. I've seen a few goalkeepers score this season. Now, this is when Warren Pate needs his best free kick of the night. It's the last chance saloon for them. Headed away by O'Connor, Salisbury helping it back in. And it'll be routine for Scott Howie. Goalkeepers way out of his goal, it's a good early clearance from Howie. It's Bannum, the goal is empty, and it's going to find its way in. Oh, what a finish. Well, that's a gamble the goalkeepers take. He had no option, really, young James Salisbury. A debut, well... It's not been his night, mistake for the first goal, up for the free kick. It was a half a decent header, wasn't it, putting it back into the mix, but he couldn't regain his ground. No, you, you can't blame him at all, I mean, he's done everything he could there. But I'll tell you what, some good thinking by Scott Howie, the goalkeeper for Shrewsbury, collected the ball quickly, got to the edge of his box and just cleared it up the field. Well, Jody Bannon gets his goal after coming off the bench. Well taken, and as Clive said, good thinking by goalkeeper Howie. Well, what a finish, but Ryan Lowe's goal will be long remembered by the crowd here at Gay Meadow tonight for its quality. But Lee RMI gave Jimmy Quinn's side quite a match here. He expected that. He had uh, Lee RMI watched in their win against Margate nine days ago. And they've done themselves credit here. And look as though they're a side that might just have a real go at trying to escape. And Salisbury and Harrison arguing the merits of the last few seconds from Lee RMI. It was cruel on them in the end. But uh, they've done pretty well, Clive. Yeah, I think there's something there left for Lee RMI. I think they've got some hope. I think they've got to keep going. And they showed tonight, you know, there's, there's something left in the tank. Shrewsbury, I think, will just to go on and be in the uh, playoffs, Kevin. Final score at Gay Meadow, Shrewsbury Town 3, Lee RMI 1. And this was the goal of the night, scored by Ryan Lowe, a real cracker. And Shrewsbury take the points. Not quite a finish at the Gay Meadow. 3-1 it's finished to Shrewsbury who are up to third. Lee RMI stay second bottom of the table. Wasn't a dirty game, played in a good spirit. 3-1, the key match fact. Okay, let's get some reaction. Uh, let's speak to uh, the winning goal scorer, one of the winning goal scorers, and the man of the match, Martin O'Connor, speaking to Johnny Phillips. Well, Martin, you look really tired after that. Was that a hard game? Yeah, um, in this division, you know, you don't get any easy games. And um, I think first half it was a bit ropey. Second half, we sort of uh, got grips to the game and come out deservedly winners, I think. Certainly, Lee didn't look like a team struggling against uh, relegation. No, they played very well. Um, I think, you know, they're fighting for their lives down the bottom there. And they've got some good players, and I think they, they gave us a good game. But obviously, sometimes, you know, your quality in, the, in our squad comes through. And to be fair, our arm form's good. So um, we knew the longer the game went on, we, we get our chance, and obviously, we, take, we took them. Well, Ryan, if we can bring you in, you certainly took your chance. At one all, it was very tight. Talk us through that goal. Yeah, well, um, I think I shanked a few, first of all. And then I had to get one on target, obviously. But. Um, Pleased to see it go in. Really, I haven't scored in four games, and uh, it's not normally for me. But obviously, I was pleased to see that go in, and we went up two on ahead then. So obviously, we were under the cosh a little bit, but then obviously Jody sneaked up with one there at the end again. So mm. pretty comfortable in the end. But we did have our backs to, against the wall for a while. Yeah, it sounds as if the crowd was starting to get edgy as well just before yeah, you got. Well, you can understand the crowd. You know, obviously, I was here last season when we got relegated. I don't think they want to see anything like that ever again mm. in the history. So yeah. it was good, you know, to. Uh, show the crowd what we can do. It's been like that for a while now, obviously, yeah. you do get a bit edgy because you want to see us win all the time and it's not that easy, obviously, as you said before, they are a good team mm. and they don't deserve to be where they are at the bottom. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid, Ryan, despite your goal, it's the old timer that gets man of the match. Would you like to do the honours? That's all right, yeah. Well done, man. Cheers, 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 fellas. Well done. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.
Yeah. Love that, didn't he, old timer Martin O'Connor? Uh, what was your assessment? I know it was three. What was your assessment of, of Shrewsbury tonight? I was a little bit disappointed in him, to be quite honest. Well, I think three one flattered him a little bit. All right, I thought Liara and I tired towards the end, and I think that's where the uh, full time training comes into it because we know they are part time. But uh, I think Phil Starbuck after his first uh, first half performance of mm. his team will be disappointed that they've they've lost three one. Well, Shrewsbury certainly started well. Um, they had a penalty claim turned down, but then uh, I suppose it's one of the best moves of the game, wasn't it? Really, for the goal, the opening goal. Yeah, as we see the strength there to Martin O'Connor. He's just played the ball inside. Ryan Law's picked it up there. And as we say, <laughs> I said it at half time, I, I thought he was going to go for the opposite corner. And I, I, I don't think he caught it cleanly. The keeper must have thought that as well. And it has, it's quite a lucky goal in the end to go through the keeper's legs. He'll be disappointed in that one. Jamie Salisbury, who's uh, on loan from Wigan on his debut as well. But they, they were looking good there, but they, they never really picked it up after that, did they, Shrewsbury, when he thought they might just kick on? Yeah, that's right. You'd have thought they'd have gone on from that because it was quite an early goal. But, uh, and, but the crowd never really got mm. behind him and gave him that drive to go on and win convincingly. And it started... Uh, towards the uh, end of the half, I thought they were under a bit of pressure. Well, they equalised the RMI, a cracking goal as well from Steve Brody, who himself is on loan from Chester, uh, although Jimmy, Jimmy Quinn will not be happy with uh, the defending with this one. Will no, he won't. It's a, it's a good ball in there, it's well cleared, but then just a, a rush, a rush kick in the air there, and then two defenders, as we said, one of them's got to take command, got to shout, after you. My ball, after you, Claude, <laughs> it was, weren't it? But uh, take nothing away from the finish. It's an absolutely superb finish from uh, Steve Broad. Yeah, he wasn't waiting up. around where, where everybody else was. He, he, he just he just lashed it, didn't he? Caught it beautifully on the yeah, ball. Yeah, he's, he's just dropped a yard or two off uh, the defender and the attacker as the ball come for the ball, anticipated where it's going to drop. And tremendous finish. Great goal. Uh, the second goal for Shrewsbury, though, was uh, a, a magnificent strike as well from Ryan Lowe as well in, in a game that, that perhaps lacked a little bit of spark and lacked a bit of quality. A great ball and a great finish. Yeah, it was. He, he, he's initially played the ball out wide left and then uh, gone up in support. But as he said in his interview, he'd had a couple of shots that went wild, well wide of the target. But this one, he looked up, saw his spot and, and he's curled a great shot in there into the, uh, into the corner. Yeah, he sort of had to dig it out of his feet as well, didn't he? It was, a, it was almost a standing start from which he caught it. Yeah, that's right. He's took first touch and then he's had to knock it on again. But as we say, he's looked up with his second touch and he's looked up and seen where the keeper is. And I don't think the keeper had no chance whatsoever. It's quite an eye for Jamie Salisbury. Uh, he was maybe at fault for the first goal. It was his debut. And he'd come up. He, he'd, he'd won a header, actually. But then it was, well, it was like the Alamo after that, wasn't it? You can see him there trying to get back, Rob. <laughs> There's no way, as you said, he won the header at the, uh, at the corner. <laughs> as you see the number seven there, Damien White. And he's trying, he knew the keeper was going to quick, uh, quickly kick it down the field because the keeper, the opposition keeper was out of his net. But... Uh, no, it was all too late. Jody Bannon with the goal, 3-1. OK, let's have a look at uh, uh, some goals uh, from the weekend because uh, Chester City, people talk about them grinding out results, but you just can't knock them at the moment. This is against Burton Albion, and uh, once again, they go a goal behind but come storming back. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of sloppy defending here, and uh, the keeper on loan from Everton will not be happy with that. Yeah, Ian Turner. Uh, yeah, it? it's, it's, uh, it's a poor co uh, goal to concede, to be quite honest, but... Uh, as you said, the battle bite, 1 0 down, and they've come away convincingly. Yeah, 1 0 Robbie Talbot after seven minutes, but then uh, we, we talk about you know having goal scorers in your side, and when you've got the likes of Darrell Clay, uh, well, you're always going to have a chance, aren't you? Yeah, and, and there you see Kevin McIntyre, he's done ever so well on that left hand side, he whips a great ball in, and uh, Darrell Clay just did what every striker does, got alongside the uh, defender and put it in. Scott Guyatt uh, made it 2-1 with a powerful header. There's a resilience about Chester, isn't there? Yeah, that's what Mark Wright's installed in his team. If they go a goal down, they always know that they've got the firepower up front to, uh, to win games and get goals. That's a key moment, Ian Turner making a save. Uh, they then went on to create a number of chances. Darren Stamp will wonder how he didn't add to his tally what, this you'll season. You'll not get a better ball delivered into the box as well. Again, McIntyre left foot and... Uh, Stampy will be very disappointed he's not added to his tally. Good finish though, Darrell Clare. Five straight wins for Chester and they remain top. What about Hereford? Could they keep up and close or keep it to five points at the top? Uh, they were against Northwich who were cut adrift at the bottom. They made heavy weather of it. They did, yeah, because uh, they have been scoring goals, as we saw. We saw them score nine against Dagenham. But, uh, and you think that they'd go on and win three or four comfortably against the bottom team. But uh, they made it very difficult, did Northwich. And in the end, 
one goal, but it's still three points and it still closes that gap. That's a good save by Matt Baker. That was Andy Woods uh, collecting quite comfortably. Um, what about this for a penalty decision? I'll tell you what. <laughs> I can't, I can't it's believe. Mark Kane on Rob Purdy. I, I think Rob Purdy can't believe that. Well, just look, at the re just look at his reaction, though. I cannot believe the referee's going to penalty there. Tony James is not six out of six, um, but he didn't get that one. Or the rebound, <laughs> Andy Woods with a save. But Tony, I wonder how that didn't go in. But this is a wonderful run from Michael Rosen. Goal scorers again, Ian, when we talk about it. Steve Guinan in the right place at the right time. Yeah, we've seen Michael Rose do that on numerous occasions this season. Get down that left-hand side and whip balls in. And Steve Guinan doing his job at the back post. And uh, I'll tell you what, they, they needed to close that gap, Rob. OK, Exeter and Barnett, uh, Drew, both... Uh, teams with uh, certainly eyes on a playoff place as well and uh, well we're going to see another goal scorer Sean Devine 16th of the season yeah he's, he's done ever so well Sean he, uh, he used to play at Barnet as well and uh, but he's scoring goals and as we see but it's a good result for Barnet because Isn't it's not an easy yes. place to go to Exeter and uh, I'm sure Martin Allen will be delighted with the point Liam Hatch had a sighter with that one but then came up with uh, the equaliser from a, a looping header yeah, he's done well, he's got on the end of it, and uh, as we see, he has looped into the goal, but they all count. And Sean Devine had just a chance to maybe take all three, but as you say, I think Martin Allen would be absolutely thrilled with a point down there. Yeah, because as we say, it's not an easy place to go, and uh, a point is a fair result, and I think both of them will be quite happy with that. Next start, the recreation ground, where Gravesend uh, in town. Oh, it's a good save as well, uh, Justin Skinner hitting the post. But here's uh, the opening goal. John Challoner. Nice header. Yeah, it was a nice header. He's got on the end of it. Just a ball floated in there. He's got on the end of it. And the keeper's position might have been a little bit wrong at that time. They had chances at Gravesend. They won four uh, out of their last six. Uh, save from Richard Barnard. Quite a game. What about this from a save from Paul Wilkinson here? Oh, it's a tremendous strike. But what a good save. He's tipped it onto the post. And uh, some good defending in the end to get away with it. Two names there from Blast from the past. Roy Essendo, remember Wickham against Leicester? Well, he's a £4,000 signing from Bishop Stortford. He made it 1-1 with a goal for Gravesend. Two in two minutes it was. Manny Omiyimni. I'm glad you said that one. <laughs> I knew you were. <laughs> oh. Made it two on, of course. Uh, he was uh, responsible for West Ham uh, in, the, in the League Cup being, uh, uh, being thrown out, wasn't it, uh, at the time on loan from Oxford? Yeah, but it's a, it's a crucial point in the end for Aldershot because at 2 1 down, it's a penalty decision there, and I think the referee got it right. Roscoe Desain making it 2 2. OK, let's have a look at the table after uh, the weekend's results and, uh, and uh, Shrewsbury are up to third place, um, significant win tonight, it was uh, maybe not the, uh, the smoothest or convincing of victories, but they are third! Down at the bottom. Lee RMI remain second bottom of the table. Conference football kicking us off on a, a, a big week of uh, football right across the spectrum here on Sky Sports, uh, because the Champions League, of course, He's back with us. At the weekend, Bolton versus Chelsea. Doors, nothing you've seen to change your mind? No. Definitely a, uh, a playoff place for them, but uh, no, I think Chester and Hereford will be vying Thanks for that top spot. Cheers. No Shows problem. me up to third tonight, though. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you soon from the game, Meadow. Bye bye. <laughs>